Some fighters are born to achieve greatness and become champions, but legendary boxer and future Hall of Famer Bernard Hopkins got there the hard way. I wanted to be good at everything I did. I wanted to be the baddest guy in North Philly, the baddest guy in the neighborhood. 46-year-old Bernard Hopkins stands poised to make history as he strives to pass George Foreman and become the oldest champion in boxing history. To have the experience which you have to live to have and have to go through things, that's my advantage. Even for this next fight, I always go back to where I came from. This is Ring Life, Bernard Hopkins. Everybody in my family can fight, including my sisters. My mother was never boxed, but I seen her throw some good left hooks every now and then. Born and raised in one of Philadelphia's most dangerous neighborhoods, Hopkins honed his survival skills there and wears his North Philly battle scars as a badge of honor. I was known as being a street fighter, and I had a few amateur fights young. When you step out of that house and you enter your own world, which is the streets, you have one side of the projects fighting the other side. That tension was a drug to me. When I was 15 years old, I got into a fight. You're in the same area, you're in the same neighborhood. It's not hard to find you. Well, he stabbed me two times. Knives and guns were the tools of the trade in North Philly, but Hopkins' weapon of choice was his air of intimidation and brute strength. And I've been stabbed two more times by two different people. If I didn't jump back, it's a natural reaction. Guy got a knife, pokes it at you, you jump back. The tip fell short of my heart. Punctured lung, I believe I had, but it was more of a badge of honor that somehow you escaped death. My luck ran out. At 17, I got certified as an adult. And that's when high school quickly became the University of Greater Force State Penitentiary. 17-year-old Hopkins was sentenced to 18 years in prison for strong-armed robbery. When I went to prison, it took a year and a half for me to even think about boxing. My name had traveled from the streets to the penitentiary. I went right into that survival mode. Yeah, I've seen people get stabbed in the neck for a TV because the guy came up and he turned the station or he accidentally stepped over the plug and the plug came out and something good was on. A guy named Michael Wilson, AKA Smokey Wilson, became my trainer. Trainers are inmates. The trainers is nobody from the streets. These are older guys that know boxing by watching TV or at one time they boxed before. So they match everybody up. Everything becomes a little city of competition. Once I got involved in boxing again and got that love back for it, I became one of the top fighters in the 38 penitentiaries from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. I don't want to box this guy, he's bigger than me. Can you, you can't say that in penitentiary. It's like there's no crying in baseball. You can't say that you don't want to fight nobody in prison. You have to scrap up and fight. And other inmates followed me as a hero. I became their champion. Hopkins spent nearly five years in prison, making a name for himself as a warrior on the block and a contender in the ring. But when he was released in 1988, it was his setbacks in the ring that would ultimately create a champion. 1988, I was in a halfway house for nine months. And I wanted the box, because I had it in my blood. I was training for the last two years. I got the love back for it. I started training harder. And they set a fight up for me. I lost the first fight. It was a four-rounder. I lost to a guy that's in the record books right now named Clinton Mitchell. After his first professional loss, Hopkins did not return to the ring until 1990. He poured his soul into training and went on to score 22 victories before losing in 1993 to Roy Jones Jr. In 1995, Hopkins began his 10-year reign as middleweight champion of the world, winning 20 consecutive bouts. I had a fight where I got rid of a guy in 21 seconds, and no matter what happens in the heat of battle, I have the power and ability to be able to change it. The fight with John Pascal was a fight where youth got whipped by experience. When they read the decision of the fight and they said, draw, I was stunned. I've been boxing two decades, and your weapon is your body. 
And for me to be 46 years old, fighting for a world championship and making history is historic. And the legacy is laid out. I'll sit back and enjoy the rest of my life trying to see who come close. The Bernard Hopkins legacy is one of tenacity, ambition, and success against all odds. As long as I'm asked what I want to be remembered by, Bernard Hopkins, he might not have been perfect. He did a lot of things that's bad, but he had courage. <laughs>